Welcome back to Upfront. Wisconsin's 6th Congressional District has been in Republican hands for decades, and two of the nation's most respected political prognosticators don't see much chance for an upset this year. Both the Cook Political Report and Sabato's Crystal Ball rank the district as likely Republican. But the incumbent, GOP Congressman Glenn Grothman, has said he has a real race on his hands this year. He faces Democrat Dan Cole of Mequon on November 6th, and Congressman Grothman joins us today on Upfront. Congressman, good to have you back on the program. Always glad to be on the show. You, you like the highlight of being a congressman. You be on my <laughs> yeah, somehow I find that hard to believe. But, uh, but let me uh, ask you uh, a very basic question. You have said this is the toughest race you've faced. Do you still feel that way? Well, yes, because of the money. I mean, until recently, he was outspending me on TV like four to one. And he has spent eight years in Washington getting to know the hyper-wealthy, hyper-liberals, New York, Florida, California. And he's been able to turn those connections, and he probably got connections as a bundler for Hillary Clinton as well, into cash for his campaign. And if you're going to be outspent, and I think by the time this is over, I'll be outspent considerably, you've got to be very concerned. Because I may not have enough money to entirely counteract things that he says that are misleading or outright not true. Do you think this district is changing politically? Um... I like to think it's not, but I do think Donald Trump, uh, well, he's done a good job. Um, his style offends some people. You know, some of his tweets offend some people, mm -hmm. including some people who are traditionally Republican. I've talked to uh, President Trump about it personally. I don't get to talk to him a lot. But when I did talk to him in the longest conversation I had with him since he was elected, I emphasized that some of his tweets are hurting him. And he'd be able to get more of his program through if he was more popular. And I think, uh, you know, it. it is unnecessarily a distraction. Are you trying to uh, differentiate yourself from the president? And if so, how do you do that? Well, I think the major reason is just style. And there are a few things he's done that I disagree with. You know, I think he, he cut money away from the Great Lakes initially that we were able to restore. So I, I can disagree with him. I'm a little bit concerned about some of the uh, tariffs on steel, where I agree, quite frankly, more with his advisor, Larry Kudlow, mm -hmm. uh, than with his com Commerce Secretary. So I'm not afraid to disagree. Spending? Are you concerned about that? Oh, well, I think... The excessive spending is really not so much caused by Donald Trump. I think Donald Trump proposed more responsible budgets. The tax budgets. reform bill? No, the tax reform bill is good. Um, and I think we moved it more towards what Donald Trump wanted than was additionally proposed. So that's a good thing. I think I was one of the people who changed the tax bill from the way it was originally proposed to the way it wound up to be a little more for the average guy. You know, initially that tax bill was going to treat interest income as uh, taxed at a lower rate than somebody who's working. You know, and I tried to do what I could to make sure everybody's treated the same. I put back in the... Uh, or was one of the people who put back mm -hmm. in the deduction for medical expenses. So I think by the time it was done, it was a really good product. And the people who were opposed to it, it's kind of hard to believe what other people are saying, were kind of the very wealthy people from New Jersey, New York, California, who didn't do as well in that tax bill as they wanted. You've seen uh, polling, though, that suggests that there are a fair number of Americans who think the tax bill is a tax break for the wealthy, that they don't believe they're really benefiting from it in the same way that, that businesses and wealthy folks are. They have to look at it. I mean, like I said, the people who voted against that tax bill in Congress, I'm saying the Republicans, voted against it because they felt the taxes were going up on the wealthy, which they are, from New Jersey, New York, California, that sort of thing. And we went out of our way again and again to make sure that people couldn't say that. We, we raised the zero bracket amount so that people in the lower income brackets are less likely to pay anything at all. I mean, across the board, that tax cut was designed to make sure we were benefiting the average guy. And I think if people get done looking at their tax return prepared next year compared to last year, they'll see it. They'll also see it if they look at their withholding taxes beginning of this year and six months into the year. Uh, you have voted to repeal Obamacare. You stand by that vote. Correct. Right? Correct. correct. Why? Um, well, because Obamacare right now is a failure in so many ways. Uh, it has caused the cost to go through the roof for people who are not in Obamacare. Um, it has caused some people to have to pay penalties for insurance, which, or for not getting insurance, which I think is entirely inappropriate and wrong. And particularly at a time when the private sector was doing a good job, particularly larger companies, uh, of having more market-based insurance and getting a handle on cost, it kind of threw a monkey wrench into the whole thing. You, you hear Democrats saying that, that people like Glenn Grothman, who have voted for the repeal of Obamacare, would be jeopardizing uh, health coverage for people with pre-existing conditions. What's your response oh, to that? Oh, that's ridiculous. In both the, both the repeals that I voted for, we retain coverage for pre-existing conditions. It's kind of frustrating for Republicans around the country because we sat in the rooms. We said we've got to maintain 
insurance for pre-existing conditions. We did maintain it in the votes that we took out of the House. Of course, nothing ever passed the Senate. And then it comes to election season, the Democrats say we want to get rid of coverage for pre-existing conditions. Anyway, it's not true. We must retain, retain coverage for pre-existing conditions. I want to give you have a chance to, to respond to something that Dan Cole has said to, about you. He said that you're one of the most partisan members of Congress, a, a Republican, one of the most partisan members of Congress. I, I don't think that's true. I, I, first of all, I'm certainly not a lackey for leadership. And secondly, I have no problem signing with Democrats on a variety of issues. You know, over a long period of time, I've sided with Democrats on things like predatory lending, okay? I am one of the few Republicans to, when, they, when the budgets come out, we just had our big 10.5% increase uh, last year in defense spending, to, to introduce an amendment with uh, Congressman Polis from Colorado to dial back that increase to 95 for 10.5, something that Republican leadership wouldn't let to the floor. Um, I am one of the only Republicans who's been out there trying to allow uh, refinancing for student loans. So again and again, uh, I have not been afraid to side with the Democrats, particularly when I feel they're looking out for the middle class or the average guy. So reaching across the aisle, you feel is, is part and parcel of who you are? I always have been. I've mm -hmm. always been independent. It's kind of ironic that now they take a one-year thing on something that didn't involve votes, involved something like co-sponsorships, and said Glenn is partisan. I think what's going on here is Dan Cole spent the last eight years in Washington and is not familiar with my record. So as the result, he wanted to run against somebody who was a, a predictable partisan. I'm not, so he just goes ahead and says I am anyway. Glenn Grothman is the uh, incumbent in the 6th Congressional District running for re-election. It's good to have you back on the program. Always glad to be on the show. Coming up next on Upfront, what should we make of the latest polls in Wisconsin? I'll be talking with Marquette Law School poll director Charles Franklin when we come back.